So far, so good. I've got a clean visual. That's your a direct feed to your optic nerve. <laughs> yes, I should hope so, huh? I mean, how does it feel to fly like a bird? Like a bird strapped to a remote control rocket. <laughs> we will get you in safely, Tovarich. Just relax and enjoy the ride. Right. Can you hear me, Raikon? Doctor. Remember the two procedures to maintain your new body. One, seizing nano repair units from your foes. And two, absorbing their electrolytes. I got it. Yes, enemy sidewalks should provide plenty of MCFC electrolytes once you slice them open and uh, extract their fluids. They're terrorists. I was planning on that anyway. That's I why I'm saying that, I guess. Their left hands, if you please. Excuse me. Is a combat data stored on holographic memory, typically located in the left hand. That data is very valuable. <clears throat> I am authorized to offer you upgrades and services in exchange for it. How generous. I'm creeped out by this. Liebe Kapitalismus. Had the world come down a few years earlier, I would have a Nobel Prize on my shelf. There, I see land. You've got like a wall of these left hands. I don't like it. Three mic out closing. No activity at the airbase. Looks like we don't need to worry about interceptors. Great. Then we have time for a quick briefing. I know you miss me, Cap, but I've been all over the materials. <laughs> That's what you said before Montenegro. Look, just humor me, buddy. Objectives, of course, are enter Abkhazia, neutralize the terrorists, and restore the rightful government. Or what's left of it, anyway. The president and most of the cabinet have been killed, and a military junta's been established. The terrorists brain-jacked all the high-ranking officers, and their cyborgs scattered the rank and file. The few leaders who have survived have no way of openly opposing the new regime. That's why they called us. Andrei Dolsev, leader of the occupation forces, an extremist linked to both the St. Petersburg massacre of 2015 and last year's terror spree in Georgia. And his arms supplier? None other than Desperado Enforcement LLC. That logo was on Ray. Imani's killers. I think it was also on his sword. Here. They could destabilize the entire region, but our more immediate problem is Jetstream Sand. Not his Believe sword, the other dude's sword. The only problem I see is that nickname. I've got my enhancements this time. He won't be an issue. He may not even be in country, but keep an eye out just in. No. Uh, sorry. Keep an eye out. Come on, guy. Ready for insertion. That's a mild reference. But yeah, he looks completely different now. Is he even human anymore? Also, why didn't they replace his left eye? They replaced maybe everything in his body. I can't even see his original body, but his left eye is still effed up by the looks of it. Raiden, you landed safely, duh? First, head inland. The waypoint is marked on your solid gun radar. Contact us on codec if you have questions. I have many questions, Boris. I have many questions. So we're upgraded enough that it's also upgraded the UI. I think at the top left and the solid gun radar on the top right have also changed. Combat manual, select codec. So at this point, this is probably where you want to tap out of the video right now because this is where I'm just going to be sitting here listening to all of these things and I'll be coming back in here at pretty much every available opportunity to see if anything changes. Let's get this done. Control, it's Raiden. I'm on the ground. Copy Raiden. Glad to hear it. Entering on foot was the right move. That craft isn't equipped with stealth camo. Or octo camo, obviously, since that would be useless in midair. And we wouldn't want to get your pricey new jet damaged, now would we? Duh. The MQ-133C was not cheap, Tovarich. <laughs> now, keep alert. According to Intel, you could find significant cyborg deployment here. 
If you were to be cornered by an entire squad, it might get difficult, even for you. Understood. Some fighting will be necessary, though. I've got electrolytes to replenish. Hmm. This is not an infiltration mission. There is no need to hide <laughs> or avoid combat outright, huh? Just do not get reckless. Stay safe and stay focused on your mission. Game says, nope, this is not MGS 1 to 4. You can basically just have fun. There is always a chance the MQ was spotted before your drop off. I would not be surprised if hostile cyborgs were already en route to your position. A little welcoming party wouldn't be so bad. I could use a warm up. Enough with the attitude, Raiden. It's time to be serious. Uh, this is no game. I need you to focus. Many people are counting on you, and I don't just mean here at Maverick. You don't need to remind me of that. Good. The last thing we need is another clever cowboy shipped back to us in pieces. On Codec is fine. Just be sure you are serious on the battlefield. Your enemies will be. Yes, sir. Another cowboy. So I assume that many of the people who died were also contractors or working with Maverick. Raiden, we are clear on the rules of engagement, yes? Clear enough. I can use deadly force against any hostile element. Hostile cyborgs, I can strike first. Basically, yes. The actual rules of engagement is more specific. A long list of no's. But you have the idea. You want to recap the highlights for me? <sighs> no weapons prohibited by international treaty. No use of force against non-combatants. Especially officials or anyone with political power who may be needed for negotiations. No use of force against any unarmed hostile seeking to surrender. And no use of force against any non-cyborg combatants without prior verbal warning. And that includes Dolzaev? Duh, but this should not be a problem. Any non-cyborg is little threat to you, Dolzaev included. Besides, we have no signs of any non-cyborg hostiles anywhere in the area. Not even one. We think Dolzaev is working alone with Desperado here. In any case, there is the ROE. Otherwise, deadly force is authorized only in clear case of self-defense. So basically, civilians off-limits, human hostiles verbal warning, hostile cyborgs, anything goes. Yes, this is a conventional warfare scenario, so the rules are based on the Hague Convention. Yeah, sounds pretty standard. Still good to list out all the no-nos before things get too hairy. ROEs that only specify who you can engage require too much judgment. They make it harder to remain focused on battle. Oh, we're starting already. Uh, this is why most military's ROEs list negatives, not positives. The few that take the other approach? I pity their soldiers the questions they face. No, oh, and for our purposes, UGs are considered the same as hostile cyborgs. Copy that. We have no rules about property damage, but uh, keep it minimal, yes? It just makes us look bad. Anything standing in your way, trees, streetlights, this is fine. But there's no reason to damage civilian homes, or to go snooping around in them. Goes without saying. What if there are collectibles inside of civilian homes? Ever thought of that? Dolzaev, I think, is the big bad. I'm not sure if we're going to fight him at the end or someone else, but... Yeah, Dolzaev is our main target, or the big bad. And everyone else is just sort of underneath him, or working for him. You're familiar with your new body now, yes? Then let's begin the warm-up. Slice at something. A palm tree, perhaps. Way ahead of you. Looks like a war zone out here. The palace cleared out quick when Dolzaev's men showed up. The streets got pretty hot after that. Well, so it is a war zone. Definitely gonna see a few civilian casualties here. Luckily, it looks like most of them got out of the city before things got bad. They've basically got control of the entire town and are using the refinery as their HQ. And that's why we're hitting the plant. Keep in mind, those cyborgs are contractors. For most of these guys, this is just a job. In theory, once you eliminate their commanding officer, they should scatter pretty quickly. Going after the oil refinery slash plants. That wasn't mentioned in the briefing. Kev, let's go over everything we have on Desperado. Roger that. Let's see here. Desperado Enforcement LLC. Registered in the US, Delaware. Makes sense. The U.S. doesn't regulate PMCs too closely. Looks like almost all of their actual business is handled outside the states, though. Says here their financials are handled by a separate company based in St. Kitts and Nevis. 
The preferred tax haven of megacorps everywhere. Probably why they incorporated in Delaware in the first place. Loose tax laws. Funneling it all through the Caribbean must help with the money laundering, though. There's still a lot we don't know about them. But they've definitely been starting a lot of fires lately. They're a PMC in name only. <laughs> what a name it is. Guess War Profiteers Incorporated was taken. But that's their business. In a nutshell, target war-torn nations on the road to peace. Reignite conflicts and walk off with all the cash that was earmarked for reconstruction. They also have ties to the drug trade, human trafficking. Sounds like a real class act. Mm. We've confirmed three key captains in Desperado. Their code names are all wind themed. The captain presiding over this coup is called Mistral. Cyborg? Yep. All three have got custom made bodies. Collectively, they're known as the Winds of Destruction. <laughs> the what? They all have action figures too? <laughs> You're one to talk, Mr. Lightning Bolt. Touche. Who, who told you? <laughs> Courtney. Now that sounds like an action figure. I didn't choose it, trust me. Yeah, well, to be honest, I doubt the Winds of Destruction picked their names either. <sighs> Different cultures use language differently. Even ones with a decent command of English. As you can attest, Mr. LB. <laughs> no, do not call me that. Do not call me that. Lightning Bolts, yes. LB, no. So I do know that Mr. Rule is the boss of this chapter. How we doing, Courtney? You're looking good on our end. GPS and audio-visual feed coming in fine. Energy consumption, check. Damage levels, check. Blood pressure, brain waves, blood sugar, check, check, check. All this monitoring equipment, I got a better view than if I was standing right next to you. Anyway, I'll be saving all your data automatically anytime something important happens in the field. But contact me anytime you want a manual save. Copy that. Good to hear that hasn't changed with this new body. Yep, the basic system's exactly the same. So, did you want to save? I would love to save, Mei Ling. And save complete. Simple, huh? Copy. And glad to hear you're okay after Africa. That ambush was no joke. Yeah, they got us. Tell me about it. Three armored vehicles should have been plenty for that job. And it would have been against any typical guerrilla force. I keep asking myself. Where would an anti money faction get the cash to hire cyborgs? It just doesn't add up. Maybe there's some intel I missed. A lead I should have followed up on. Maybe if I reacted faster or coordinated better. I don't know. You can't think that way, Courtney. Not in this business. You did everything you could. Put it behind you and move on. <sighs> You're right. Thanks. You've got the right idea, Ryden, but sometimes it's not that easy. I'm deeply concerned about the Codex for Courtney, because if it's anything like the previous games, you would have to save a game, abort out of it, and then instead of saying, yep, okay, the game's... you can close the game now, you get a speech from someone about a movie or an inspirational quote or something. Right. you need to save? I'm terribly worried that so something similar may be in effect here. No? What's up? I wanted to follow up on our talk earlier about the stress that comes with the job. PMC work can be traumatic, even for non-combatants. If the pressure ever gets to be too much, have one of the ex-military there take over. Just... I'm not doing that, Raiden. PMCs wield massive influence over international affairs. Abolishing SOP didn't change that. They need a better understanding of what they're mixed up in. The laws, politics, local cultures. Ex-military aren't here to provide that. They can't. We need civilian voices like mine here, too. You're right. Just take care of yourself. Ha! <laughs> Don't worry. Africa was more than enough excitement for one lifetime. It's a good thing that limo was armored. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you'd now be the world's clumsiest cyborg. Right in. Hey! Cyborg Courtney could have been your partner. I might have saved your ass. How? By spilling coffee all over the enemy? Raiden? Oh, come on. I'm not that... Oh, son of a... Please tell me that was a joke. Raiden, you're being a shithead. What's up? Um... No? Did you need anything else? No, guess not. Just wanted to hear the sound of your voice. 
Oh, save it for your wife, Raiden. Oh, there's some there's some complex problems there, Courtney. I don't know if we've told you about that. All right, Doctor. Raiden, shall we review the capabilities of your new body? Copy that. Go ahead, Doc. As we discussed, you've been outfitted with two revolutionary new abilities. Fuel electrolyte absorption and self-repair from seized nanopaste. Precisely. First, electrolyte absorption. This is simplicity itself. As your HF blade is linked directly to your fuel cells, simply cut into any source of electrolytes. Say, a hostile cyborg made up of CNT muscle fiber. And your fuel cells will recharge on their own. Rather elegant, wouldn't you say? I would indeed. It's been great so far. But, ah, the repair process is a bit more uh, involved. A bit more uh, messy, you might say. Most military cyborg models store a cache of biotic self-repair nanopaste in their lower abdomen. So I need to slice them open and use Zandatsu to extract it. Cut and take, in other words. Zandatsu. Correct. Once extracted, you need only to crush this unit in your hand to absorb the repairing agent inside. Keep in mind, it is extremely delicate. If the unit should hit the ground, some paste will surely leak out. It will still repair your body, but less so than if you can retrieve it directly before your foe falls over. Basically, harvest their organs before their body can even hit the ground. Jesus. Rather gruesome, I realize. But then you Americans enjoy a bit of gore, don't you? I may be a citizen, but I've never really thought of myself as American. Oh? Hmm. Well, yes, I suppose I could understand that, given your history. But what then? Surely you don't identify as a Liberian. I don't identify with anyone. No nation. No ethnic group. I'm my own man. Anyway, I seem to recall those gory torture porn movies were pretty popular in Germany, too. Mm, you're from East Germany, Indeed. dude. Indeed. Indeed. These splatter films are big in Germany, Russia, Japan, everywhere. Well, everywhere except regions afflicted by actual warfare. It all has to do with taming our fears, you know? Huh? The desire to feel fear, to taste death, but from a safe distance. These films allow the viewer to delude themselves into thinking they have overcome their fears. This... Okay, uh, okay, Doc. I, I got the gist. Let's save the full psych lecture for some other time, though, huh? Yeah, I need to stop playing this game again. So these self-repair units and the other cyborgs... They mean they can heal themselves at any time? Indeed. It is typically a slow process. Not much faster than a regular human body heals a wound. And you didn't think it was a good idea to give me one of these things? Mm. Certainly not. We removed all extraneous options in your case to maximize power and speed, you know. Healing wounds is extraneous? Your ability to absorb the nanopaste agent is far more efficient, Raiden. With it, your wounds heal almost instantly. I know, what? And a standard repair unit, once depleted, is nothing but an empty shell inside you. Dead weight! I get that, Doc, but it also means I need to constantly be grabbing them out of enemies. No, it doesn't. Don't be silly. Simply avoid taking damage and you will be fine. <laughs> yeah, simple. You're not accounting for the skill of the player here, Doctor. How is your eye, Raiden? Great. My sight's perfectly balanced between both eyes. I think my vision's improved, actually. What? Quite right. Quite right. Your eye patch house is an artificial compound eye unit. Oh! The unit contains over 200 million solid-state image sensors, each with its own individual lens. 200 megapixels, huh? Doesn't sound like all that much. More than sufficient for the application. A human's optic nerve has only about a million fibers, you know. Were we to add more sensors, your perceived vision would not improve. There's only so much modern image compression technology can do. Huh. So I shouldn't expect any more dramatic improvements to my eyesight? No, your brain would no longer be able to process any more visual information in real time. Still, compared to previous ACEs, yours has 1.4 times the resolution and a superior compression algorithm. It may only result in a slight perceived change, but it could wind up making the difference during a mission. Regrettably, I have not had enough time to develop a new eyeball unit just ah, yet. Ah, there we go. Thus, I have cut out the ability to deploy the ACE unit separately and simply installed it on a fixed eye patch. Works for me. 
If I was using an eye unit, I wouldn't see any better than a regular human. Ah, but remember, the human eye is so much more than a simple light receptor. They play a vital role in person-to-person -person communication. Sooner or later, you'd miss it. Stuff like that's important for some tasks, sure. For this op, not so much. And with less moving parts, the lower the chance of something going wrong. <laughs> Besides, I like it. Well, I'm very pleased to hear this. I can worry about how I look after I complete the mission. That's some lovely sentiments at the end there. I'm very confused though, because the right hand eye seems to have some red light coming out of it. That's been modified. So why couldn't they do something similar with a left eye perhaps? Maybe they just can't create one from scratch. But yeah, his eye patch is an eye in and of itself. I did not know that. Stay vigilant, Raiden. You must continue along, Raiden. Check your destination on the Soliton radar. I don't think we're getting any more useful information here. Stay vigilant, Raiden. All right. Do we have anything here? Oh, no, let's not do that. And let's skip on the VR missions for now. Alright, how do you play this again? Uh, left stick moves, right stick is camera. I can cut down a palm tree. Doctor, I cut down a palm tree. You must continue along, right? No, I want to tell you that I cut down a palm tree. Burning through those fuel cells, as you can see up on the top left there. And that actually prevents me from using blade mode. That's uh, not ideal. Yeah, this game isn't a looker, but it's running very, very smoothly. At the moment, anyway. Guy coming from behind. Yeah, let's get some parry practice in. Right. Whenever you engage in battle, I will designate a battle area for you. Stay within the area to avoid collateral damage. Can't move outside of the battle area when we're in battle. Had your fill? With this body, I could take these guys with no eyes. Intel wasn't exaggerating on the cyborg count. Well, you know how fast the tech's been spreading these last few years. That CNT muscle fiber packs the power of a jackhammer into every limb. What enterprising soldier of fortune could resist? And cyborgs are still human. Real thinking people. Way less risk of collateral damage than your typical UAV strike. And don't forget the PR angle. Nations start playing Frankenstein with their troops, and the public goes nuts. PMCs, on the other hand, are off the ethical radar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They still don't even count PMCs in official death tolls. With SOP out of the picture, private militaries needed a new edge on the market. We got it. You sound proud of that. In a way, cyborgs are just SOP troops by another name. Only all muscled up and less predictable. But it makes you wonder, where'd Desperado find these guys? I'm not complaining. They're like walking vending machines. Right. Vending machines full of blood. <sighs> <laughs> Easy there, Dracula. Like I said, there's still people. People who terrorize and take innocent lives for money. Mm. They sowed their fate when they took this job. I'm just the Reaper. Damn. 
It's a bit cold, right? It's my job, dude. For you. Anyway, uh, his school. Let's get to work. Time to increase the peace. I'm sorry. All right. Have I upset you, Kevin? You sounded proud of the whole PMC thing, and then I just said that, and suddenly you're noping out of it. All right. Zandatsu tutorial is now playable via VR missions. I think we owe it to ourselves to check that out. Hey Boris, about the Soliton radar. I noticed that it doesn't get jammed anymore, even if I get spotted by the enemy. Back in the old days, it'd be useless the second an alarm was triggered. Well, once the Patriots fell, classified technology spread all over the world. This new Soliton radar is one example. By applying a non-linear Schrodinger equation to the Soliton solution, they were able to prevent the jamming that plagued the original models based off the KDV equation. I'm impressed. You know your stuff, Mr. President. Of course. I'm a businessman. You think I could run a profitable PMSC without being up to date on the latest tech? But I wonder, how exactly is the equation different? I mean, I'm no expert on how the KDV equation was implemented in the first place. But I'd love to know how the Schrodinger equation fits into all this. <sighs> Raiden, on Battlefield, most important thing is how to use equipment, not theory behind it. He doesn't the know. Is number one he priority. does not know. So do not worry your head about equations and such things. Just concentrate on using the equipment to your advantage, da? In other words, you have absolutely no idea, do you? Mm -hmm. The mission, Raiden. Focus on the mission. Schrodinger's equation or whatever is very, very funny. Raiden, you'll need to head inland. But first, make your way through this building. Sorry, man, but I have to ask. Where did Mr. Lightning Bolt come from anyway? Ugh, seriously? <sighs> All right. Well, I told you where I got Raiden from, right? Code name. World War II, yep. the Japanese yep. had a plane called Raiden. The Allies named it Jack. Yeah, I remember. And my real name's Jack. So yeah, they codenamed me Raiden. They being the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Never really suited me. But it's better than... Jack just reminds me too much of the past. I hear you. Someone once told me, you can find your own name and your own future. Was that Snake? After that, I dropped Jack for good. Right, right. And this lightning bolt business? Well... The Rai part of Raiden means thunder, and Den is electric, so Raiden is basically lightning bolt. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I was explaining that to Imani, and he just busted out laughing. <laughs> so he called you that as a joke? He was basically just giving you shit. And now he's dead. <laughs> yeah, he actually had a pretty good sense of humor. He was one of the most charismatic men I'd ever met. I don't know much about politics. But being around him, you could just tell he was a natural leader. <sighs> Such a goddamn shame. Mm -hmm. I won't let it happen again. Desperado ends here. Comic book villains and all. Yeah. We're counting on you, uh, Mr. Lightning Bolt. <laughs> oh. I'm struggling to recall the end of MGS2, which is really sad because I've finished it about a month ago again. Whether Solid Snake used those exact words to Raiden during the outro outside Federal Hall or wherever it was. I think that was Snake, but not sure. So Raiden, who was this that told you to find your own name before you stopped going by Jack? Never mind. The one and only Solid Snake. Hero of Outer Heaven, Zanzibar Land, Shadow Moses. The list goes on. Right, right. Guy's a legend. I forgot you knew him so well. Yeah, he saved my ass at Big Shell. Not to mention a few times after that. <laughs> I've lost count. In terms of pure combat ability, he's one of the greatest soldiers I've ever seen. But it's not only that. He knows what's right, and he just gets it done. Period. No one can stop him. I've learned a lot from him. He'd kill me if he heard me talking about him like this. Wow. I didn't know you were such a fanboy. I thought you were going to start crying there for a sec. <laughs> Very funny, Kev. Seriously, though. 
Did Snake know he had a stalker? No. <laughs> <sighs> hey, relax. I'm only ribbing you. I just wish I got to meet the guy, you know? Whoa. I know. You're no fun. Okay, so the start of that conversation, it sounded like Snake was still alive, but at the end, I just wish I got to knew the guy. It does sound like he is passed on because he was definitely in a bad way at the end of MGS4. All right, you two have absolutely nothing else for me, so let's take a look at the VR missions. When you exit the VR missions, you will restart story mode from the last checkpoint. Okay. I'll check out customize after this to see what that's about. It says cleared missions 0 of 20 down at the bottom, but I thought we did 1 and 2 at the very start of this video series. Let me check it out. Yeah, we've been here. I'm not sure why it's saying they're not cleared. Let's begin with a quick... It still says 0 of 20 on the bottom there. One, two, three, four. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Apologies. So these are the 20 down here. 7, 14. Yep, down to 20. And it looks like there are five tutorial missions. So we do not have any VR missions, actual VR missions unlocked here. We just have tutorials. All right. Zandatsu time. Body comes equipped with a technique we call blade mode. Let's begin by assuming the fighting position. Good. Now use blade mode to strike all of the targets. That was very quick. I didn't get to see all of that, but basically you rotate the right stick and you can do this. Now, a few souls are empty by the looks. That was a very bad slice. Now remember, blade mode exacts a heavy toll on your fuel cells. Replenish your energy by attacking enemies. Your blade will absorb their electrolytes automatically. Try restoring your fuel cells back to maximum now. I love that Standard red glow on the blade. You can dismember immediately, no problem. Other fools will not fall so easily. You will first need to attack and damage them to some degree. So standards, that alert noise. Standards we can dismember immediately. But even that's not working properly. Yeah, so blade mode is not actually that powerful by the looks of it. It does work, but it's slow. And now, the Zandatsu technique, or the stab and grab as some call it. Cut and take. Activate blade mode with full fuel cells, and you will automatically analyze the ideal cutting position. Execute it successfully and you will seize your full self-repair unit and restore some of your vitality. Now, try it for yourself. Take the enemy's repair unit before he falls. Extract the organs before he hits the ground. So I believe the ideal time to hit blade mode is Next, once you... Let's review special attack. Never mind. Approach a target from the rear or above without being noticed. And you can eliminate them with a single strike. I call it the ninja kill. Form a ninja kill. Okay, so this is not an infiltration mission, but we do need to be careful. Oh, we're actually using the circle button. Okay. Jesus. Finally, a word about your enhanced AR. 
Enhanced AR adds several layers of information to your augmented reality vision. Use it for additional intel on your enemies or to see new aspects of your surroundings. Just remember, Enhanced AR is automatically disabled as soon as you attack. Up on the D-pad? Hmm. So at the moment we go into blade mode or we attack, we lose the AR. Oh, we can. That was going to be my next question. Can we use it to see through walls? We totally can. Now, sneaking up behind enemies, can I just... Yes, I can just run up to them and do that. Great. But doing that doesn't replenish my fuel cells. Yeah, no. Definitely gonna need to practice this a bit to get used to it, but so far it feels reasonable. Alright, let's get out of here and go back to the game. shoulder and the problem is if I hit the wrong shoulder the coastline is too long and heavily guarded you must take the inland route I'm just having a look at the scenery dude I'm at this beautiful country I want to take a look around before we go inside there before we look at some horrible things inside there right you need to head inland I hear you we're making our way to an oil refinery yeah, if I hit the wrong shoulder button, we lose some of our fuel cells, and they're not coming back until we actually strike someone. Right, this is Boris. Give me your status. Looks clear. No one in sight. Good. Let's recap the route you will take. As I said, the enemy's HQ is in the refinery along the coastline. We were just the there. has been spotted there using satellite photography. Also on site, Mistral, a desperado captain. So I go through the city. Cross the bridge into the old town, then head down to the rear of the refinery. Still, I think they anticipate us. They will probably have a grand reception awaiting you at the old city. Do not let your guard down. in the lower corridor I see try to flank them or approach from behind no I see it no it's just a repair nano paste never mind so just to cite my curiosity if I was to do something like this now and look at this has this changed these cyborgs can cycle between machetes rifles whatever the situation demands you can deflect bullets in a ninja run, but do not let your guard down just because the enemy is far away. Yeah, I don't know how often I need to come in here. Huh. It looks like grenades are standard equipment for these cyborgs. Of course, you will want to avoid taking any blast directly. In combat, positioning is everything. These cyborgs are seasoned professionals. Do not be surprised if they block an attack or two. Just keep striking, and perhaps their guard will break down. I don't like your usage of the word perhaps there, Boris. Self-repair units are housed in Cyborg's lower torsos. Strike at the lower abdomen in blade mode to seize the unit. Stick to quick slashes when you are surrounded. 
they leave you less exposed, so you can change tactics as you move. <laughs> you can also string attacks together to keep your enemies off balance, yes? The stealth craft made it back to Sochi all right? Da. Safe and sound. No repairs necessary. Some routine maintenance and she will be as good as new. Good to hear. I'm guessing that thing doesn't come cheap. Well, an old Soviet army friend gave me discount. He runs a PMC specializing in airborne warfare. An air force for hire? <laughs> That's a new one. Ever since SOP, Mercs started to fill more and more regular combat duties. SOP ended, but the trend did not. Most every modern military mm. relies on PMC support in one way or another. Good news for Maverick, I suppose. Anyway, that's quite the little jet your friend has. I was expecting a lot of turbulence coming in that low. But she was smooth as silk. Didn't feel like I was a bird, exactly. But probably the next best thing. The MQ-133C uses a brand new type of active adjustment control system. Sensors on the plane take readings 120 times a second, and uh, to be honest, I don't know how it works. You're being honest, but the son. crew chief tells me this is what keeps her flying so steady. It is all state-of-the-art technology. There are only three of them in the entire world. And he just Even hired the mask? The 133 spy plane she is based on is only two years old. It is fitted specially for Cyborg, so maybe demand is a bit low now, but I think that will change soon, eh? Hmm. It's funny. Its guts are all bleeding edge, but from the outside, it looks almost retro. Until recently, stealth aircraft design was focused on radar absorbing materials and improving aerodynamics. But lately, engineers are trying to use the shape of the craft to do more than improve gas mileage. Maneuverability is a low priority. This kind of plane is not meant for dogfighting, after all. And we can afford all this? I hate to ask, but will we clear a profit on this op? You need not worry about such things. But yes, we should be fine. Where the proper equipment can make or break a mission, we should have the best. That miss with the anti-air missile last month was a painful reminder of this lesson. Ah, uh, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah, but that aircraft had flares, and therefore we had no chance. There's a lot of things I find very curious about that. The world in which this is taking place, the fact that things like that are available for hire, but Boris, I'm sorry, you used the phrase most every. You are clearly not Russian. Huh. I didn't think flares could still fool anti-air missiles like that. There we go. They uh can't. At least not with any modern missiles. It was an old stinger, wasn't Recent it? Recent missiles rely on a dual wavelength or IIR system for guidance. Flares wouldn't fool either of them. But that was no recent missile I had. That Cusack Derma couldn't even take down a fat tilt rotor target. And at close range, Chort was me. Someone translate. On, Boris. We had no intel. No reason to think that we'd be facing anything like that. You budgeted for the tools appropriate to the job. No one blames you. Perhaps. In any case, now we know what we are dealing with. This is still a business, but this time I am stretching the budget as much as possible. Expenses like that aircraft and your new body are all part of this. Both were worth the money. This body's more capable than I could have imagined. I'm glad you feel this way, since it is still company profit. Oh. Remember, if you quit on us, you either return it or you buy it. Yeah, Boris. I remember the first five times you told me. You may have said that five times, but I did not think of that at all. We are property of the company. Holy shit. Yeah, I definitely don't like this world. Ryzen, what I said about staying focused on the mission. Understood. No need to explain. I say this because I have been there. I have let my emotions take over on the battlefield. Some of the PMC work I did after my discharge was... They were gray area jobs. But that's all in the past. When I took on those former PLA soldiers to form Maverick, I laid out my conditions. We would only take operations we believed in. And we would run them clean. No exceptions. Most of them agreed. They had their own bad memories from their time in Paradise Lost. I can certainly attest to that. Yes, of course. I forget who I'm talking with. Most of the XPLA have moved on now in any case. But the point remains the same. 
Everyone at Maverick is accountable for their actions. We are clear to take this job under international law, and we can use force against any cyborg hostiles under the basic rules of engagement. But remember, if we harm any civilians, on purpose or no, it will mean trouble. All kinds of trouble. So, stay in control and stay on mission. Got it. Sounds like Imani was a pretty great leader. Such a goddamn waste. I've run cover for a lot of VIPs, but men like him are a rare breed. He had all these conflicting factors to deal with. Old tribal tensions, business interests, the military. But Imani got them all working together in a stable government, and all without firing a shot. The savior of a nation. No wonder they called him that. He had a gift, for sure. But he also put in the hard work. He was big on equality and justice in every aspect of government. He fought for it day in, day out. And Mani single-handedly energized his people. He's a big part of why the country recovered so quickly. True. It was more than new buildings and jobs. The people had hope again. If only we had someone like him back in Liberia. Things would have been different, that's for sure. And it was my job to protect him. Right it. And Monty wouldn't want me to go after Desperado. Not out of revenge, anyway. But he would want them stopped. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's in the title. Right. That saying you like about your sword being a tool of justice? Yeah. It's why I fight. Sometimes taking a life saves others. A life, or two, or three, or forty in your case, but I know what you mean. Besides, it's not like those cyborgs you're fighting have been brain-jacked. Wouldn't be much point in sending jacked cyborgs. True. Having someone pilot a body remotely only really makes financial sense for espionage missions. And you might as well use UGs if you're gonna let an AI control your soldiers. So yeah, they're probably using emotional restraints, but those cyborgs are fighting of their own free will. Emotional restraints? See where I'm coming from? I get it, it's just... You didn't used to seem so comfortable with the idea. What about what Sam said? About your ideals holding you back? Ah, bullshit. He's good. But now I know how he moves. How he thinks. And I've got my new body. My philosophy says when and why to fight, not how. It won't keep me from beating Sam. And next time we meet, I will beat him. I'll kill him. And I'll do it to save others from suffering. With my ideals intact. You sure about that, Rod? All right, right. Oh, Raiden. I feel you're going down a very dark path. One thing I can't stop wondering about, Kev. Hmm? What's up? Sam. If he wanted to kill me back on the train, he could have. Yep. Easily. So, why didn't he? Good question. But I should be asking you. Your left eye was our only video feed. After he stabbed it, I, I got nothing. I mean, I got the details from your report after the fact, but that's it. He was probably just too distracted. Boris's attacks, escaping, there was a lot going on. No. No, that's not it. Well, why else? What does he have to gain from letting you live? I don't know. I mean, my immediate thought on that is he just wants to see us reach our potential. Right. head for the oil refinery. No? Got something else for me? Yeah. You mentioned SOP before. How much do you know about it? The Sons of the Patriot system? Same stuff as anyone else in the industry, probably. Basically, a nanomachine software combo for controlling contractors. Used to be required for all PMCs. Soldiers couldn't fire unless their ID matched their weapon and they had clearance. Well, this From the commanding again. officers. And the rules of engagement, I mean. It had some mental effects as well. Moderating pain, enhancing concentration, that sort of thing. The idea was SOP would minimize arms smuggling and civilian casualties. A kinder, gentler war. An oxymoron, any way you look at it. Civilian deaths did drop, though. Because soldiers in the system could coordinate in real time, share info. Between that and the ID weapon locks, a lot of people felt better about employing privatized military. <laughs> the irony is, the system was developed based on criticisms of PMC Ops. 
mostly American interventions. SOP propaganda said it would put limits on the war market. It would change war. What it really did was shift market share over to the PMCs. Civilian deaths went down, but total casualties just kept on climbing. More than ever, war was big business. And business was booming. Until SOP got hacked. Suddenly, everyone realized how dangerous it was to have a single system controlling entire PMCs. That was the beginning of the end for SOP. Public opinion on privatizing war did a 180. After that, a lot of local conflicts and civil wars died down. The PMC conglomerates had to split up and downsize just to stay in business. And that about does it for SOP 101. Class dismissed? Not bad, Professor. But it's not the whole story. No, I know. Let's finish this later. I better keep moving. And if we want the full story, we're going to have to replay MGS4. Need something else? I thought we'd get back to our little history lesson. What do you know about the Patriots? I know that they were behind everything we talked about before with the SOP system. People thought these 12 guys controlled world politics and the global economy from the shadows. Not this and shit again. Worked. Except there weren't 12. And they weren't guys. Or even humans. They were massive AI networks. All the better to gather information on a global scale, or censor it if they wanted. They'd manipulate factions to keep wars raging, all while selling arms to both sides. The PMCs made billions too, of course. SOP was the Patriots' masterstroke. They could control battles directly, down to each individual soldier. The system might even still be around if the AIs hadn't all been destroyed. I'm impressed. You know your stuff. Not many people have even heard of the Patriots. More than when they were active. But still, not many. Almost no one knows they were AIs. Or that they're the real reason SOP went away. Well, the few that do know aren't going to talk about it publicly. Even the world leaders. Especially the world leaders. The people would panic. Assuming anyone believed them. Which they wouldn't. You can find speculation on the net if you look hard enough. Some of them get pretty close to the truth. But the stories never made it into the mainstream. Just another conspiracy theory. I'm not surprised. It's a little hard to believe, you know? It just sounds crazy. When Kevin briefed me about all this in orientation, I thought it was some kind of BS detecting test. So Kevin knows about it as well. I think the only thing she hasn't mentioned is that I thought the Patriots were the original six people from Operation Snake Eater, were they? That was what was said right at the very end of MGS4. And Zero was in charge. Alright then. Hey Raiden, let me ask you something. The Patriots. Why would AIs do all of that? I can see why people would want all the money, but AIs? What did they stand to gain from it all? Who knows? Maybe they didn't even know. Optical neuro AIs aren't your typical PCs. They learn over time, change in unpredictable ways. The core AI, JD, was bent on expanding the war economy. Maybe to fund the Patriots' other activities. Or maybe that's just the way it evolved. Like a secondary objective that took over. One of the other AIs said it was created to filter out unnecessary information. Gossip, trivia. I don't remember this. All for the sake of future generations, to drive the evolution of the human race. Or so it said. Was that the truth? Or a lie? To manipulate me? Who can say? To think. Something like that. Running a nation. An America, no less. It's terrifying. Thank God they were all destroyed. But did it really change that much? Uh, maybe not. Contractors still got to eat after all. Soldiering for hire has always been a risky business, but at least before it was good money. There was a decent chance you could get rich and retire early. All that disappeared during the SOP years. Demand was high, but the workforce was flooded. More and more soldiers were willing to work for cheap. It got so you'd have to work years before you could even pay back your initial training and insurance fees. Relevance? Yeah. I can see Sundowner's point. Whoa! Uh, the global recession certainly didn't help. Unemployment shot up across the US and the EU. 
Even if contractors gave up and packed it in, there weren't any jobs waiting for them back home. The irony is the recovery was all war-driven. It wasn't a general recovery at all. Not only did globalization exploit the poor countries, but it crippled first world employment too. And SOP's gone. But now we've got these PMCs that are basically mobsters. Just thugs in uniform. Yeah, not a pretty picture. The game's being a little bit too real at the moment, I think. Raiden mentioned Sundowner's name. We haven't at this point been informed who Sundowner is. I'll just spoil it right now and say it's Nemani's killer. Um, yeah, there was some deeply disturbing stuff that you just mentioned there, Courtney. Doctor, I've just noticed that the three contacts above here are Maverick. Doctor is not Maverick, but he's working for them. That armor is made from standard grade composite carbon nanotube material. It should offer little resistance. You can likely slice them up in blade mode before they can even touch you. Of course, blade mode cannot be activated unless some charge remains in your fuel cells. The last blow in a combination attack or a particularly strong hit will sometimes leave your enemy exposed. If you enter blade mode right at that moment, it will be even more effective than normal. Yeah, I have read that somewhere in the past that when the screen flashes, that's when you should activate blade mode. Doctor, you have anything more on these cyborgs? Only what we went over in your briefing, if you had been paying attention. Standard military-grade cyborgs, MCFC integrated carbon nanotube muscle fibers. Impressive response time and power yields when focused correctly. Most will likely possess extrasensory skills as well. Infrared vision is almost standard these days. They can function without breathing for short periods of time, Okay, okay. Nothing I didn't already know. Not all cyborgs you face will be the same, of course. You may notice a range of different capabilities. It all depends on the manufacturer. Muscle fiber and neurotransmission technology is advancing all the time. Of course, you have the very latest science has to offer. A typical cyborg is no match for your equipment. If you do say so yourself. No, <laughs> I realize combat is about more than the equipment. Situational awareness, predictive ability, nerves. One must determine a course of attack or defense and execute on a moment's notice. Reaction time is key. Cyborg enhancements do not change that. Agreed. Yeah, the parry windows are much, much narrower on hard mode. Hey Doc, I'm curious. Can I recharge off any cyborg? Even a non-military unit? Not that I ever would, of course. Do not ask Just this question, Rodden. Cyborg, I very much doubt you will encounter any of those on this opt. Besides... Against the rules of engagement, I know. Like I said, just curious. Hmm. In theory, then. No, I would doubt very much that you could. Even from those that opted for complete body replacements due to injury or illness, you know. Though I have heard of some very wealthy clients who wanted to fight the effects of aging. Doctor? Hmm? Ah, yes, your question. No, extracting MCFCs from pedestrian cyborgs is unlikely. Most non-military enhancements use polymer muscle fiber that is a generation behind yours. Carbon nanotube would be a bit much for anyone who wished to lead a normal life, you know. And polymer systems can be powered by rechargeable electric batteries. Organic muscle fiber, which allows extraction of nutrients from the bloodstream, does exist, but it requires artificial blood for sufficient power output. This so-called white blood requires regular dialysis and was mostly phased out once cyborg technology became mainstream. We're familiar with that. True, some use cultivated muscle tissue to take nourishment from the body's natural bloodstream. But such systems are more regenerative medicine than cyborg technology. I'm sure you'll agree. Of course, natural musculature or no if the body is equipped with a ceramic bone structure can't get energy from non-military <laughs> got it well uh, one moment i have more thanks doc i'm glad you cut it off there raiden yeah in mgs4 raiden had his blood removed and then he had white blood injected into himself which was um yeah it was he was hooked up to a dialysis machine at some point i think because something went wrong. I don't remember. I need to play MGS4 again. So, as I was saying, 
There are many differences between pedestrian and military cyborgs. Ugh, you're still on about this. Uh, no, first and foremost, military cyborgs are generally full body conversions. You mean as opposed to partials? Yes, as opposed to just grafting on an arm or leg where a myoelectric prosthesis would suffice. As I have said, for the general public, these full body replacements are quite rare. Quite rare. Unlucky Only military. in cases of extreme injury or illness, generally. Perhaps a few eccentrics who wish to live longer. In any case, most pedestrian cyborgs are no more than an artificial limb or two. We call these partials. Doctor, I know. I just said that. Partials enhancements are not designed to meet the rigors of military use. A pair of synthetic arms attached to an organic body cannot match the power of those on a full cyborg. Total body conversions also armor the entire soldier against stray ordnance and minor injury. This is why wounded contractors most often opt for the works rather than simply replacing the lost yeah. limb. I hear it's why most of Maverick cyborgs had it done, anyway. Of course, there is the rather uh, dramatic change in appearance to consider. Civilian life as a cyborg can be, well, complicated, as I'm sure you can attest. But for the field, man and metal, capability beyond the natural human body, it has a functional beauty. Beauty or beast? <laughs> Both lie in the eye of the beholder, which brings us to the senses. Machine implants can also restore lost vision and hearing, and with added sensitivity, as you know. And that's straight into the brain. Become standard in most military conversion packages, along with pain suppression and dampening less useful emotions, similar to how SOP operated. Yeah, no matter how hard I'm hit, it doesn't really hurt. Of course, everything has its limits. Do not let your high threshold for pain make you reckless. Understood. All I'm really getting out of that is a partials. People like you and me getting a single limb replaced. Um, that's fairly, fairly low level, I'll say. Whereas if you're one of these jacked up cyborgs that we're fighting, you've got your entire body replaced which, with much better equipment. Doctor, about my pain threshold. It doesn't hurt exactly, but I can still feel it. It's not painful, but it's still pain. It's hard to explain. Well, your nervous system is still fully intact, of course. It would be dangerous for you to be entirely unaware of your body taking damage. Instead, your nerves are controlled such that pain is no longer so unpleasant. Uh... How do you mean? Take epinephrine, for example, or adrenaline, as you might know it. Okay, that makes this sense. This hormone makes it harder to feel pain, yes? Your implants work using a similar method. Yet, for all we now understand of the nature of pain, much of it remains a mystery. How so? Well, why do we feel pain? Evolutionarily speaking, of course, to signal external injury or internal sickness. If the body is threatened, pain notifies the brain so it can take steps to ensure survival. In other words, pain has a clear and logical purpose. Agreed. But in certain cases, pain can drive more unconstructive behavior. In situations where fight and flight are both still options, one might simply break down crying or drop to the ground and begin writhing about. This would appear only to diminish one's chance of survival, not increase it, yes? Is that really Maybe pain, though? some other factor at play. Well, the most common theory would link pain with the societal nature of mm, humanity. With emotion or whatever. If friends are close by, then experiencing pain might indeed reduce your likelihood of survival. But if allies are near, these expressions of pain serve as a plea for help. Thus, you are more likely to live. Fear of pain might also discourage one from entering a dangerous situation in the first place. Whatever the reasons, the data clearly shows that survival rates rise directly with sensitivity to pain. The converse is also proven. Those less able to feel or express pain have a lesser chance of survival. So, mankind has evolved as a social animal. And in the process, pain has become more pronounced, more visceral. <laughs> a little pain never hurt anyone, huh? But if pain is there to ensure survival, well, what's that say about the future for us cyborgs? As a transhumanist, I do not believe all evolution must follow the exact method Darwin posited. Cyborg technology is still survival of the fittest, after all. Just in a new form. You should be proud of what your body has become. 
It is the culmination of great achievements in science. Me? I had nothing to do with it. The credit's all yours. <laughs> well, yes. I should be proud as well. I'm definitely feeling pain going through all these codex. Doctor, about my fuel cells, the electrolytes. Do all military cyborgs use the same type? I'm not going to run across anyone, you know, incompatible with me, am I? Blood types. An excellent question. Your fuel cells, like any other, operate much in the same way as a typical battery. They do not need replacing after a single use, of course, and they do not require recharging. They do, however, require a fuel source. The vending machines. That I know already. Yes, that. There are several different types of fuel cells. Phosphoric acid, MCFC, molten carbonate like yours, solid oxide, and so forth. Each type can be further divided into classes, each which runs on its own electrolyte material. However, all current military cyborg MCFCs run on the same one electrolyte. That's good news. Why all the same electrolyte, you ask? The answer lies in the catalyst that helped make up your carbon nanotube musculature. It was breakthroughs in researching these catalysts and CNT manufacturing that enabled large-scale production. Breakthroughs that happened after all the data the Patriots were covering up finally leaked. It could not have happened without your help, Ryden. Science owes you a great debt. And I do as well. Working on your body has been quite educational. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I never want to hear that phrase in my entire life again. Um, what happens when we upgrade to Windows 12, though? Is that going to make the other cyborgs incompatible with us? Okay, done. I'll take a look at customize once we hit the next checkpoints. Alright, we're sorry about this in the tutorial. Jesus! Excellent, Raiden. Hold chip M, that's worth BP. Uh, remember this encounter from the demo. Raiden, take that main thoroughfare. You can use augment mode to see where the enemy is located. Your body analyzes radar and IR data to construct your AR display. Huh. Some civilians are still in the city. That is not good. I do know there is also a trophy for rescuing the civilians. Specifically, there's one directly ahead of us, just above Raiden's head, in between those two numbers. Or three numbers. But I don't think we'll be able to do this because I do not trust myself to be able to do it. Right, so what is customize? Begin customization. I think this is where I might be able to purchase some upgrades using my BP. Like so. Alright, custom body. There's not much we can do about that. A unique cyborg frame upgraded to aid Raiden in his fight against Sam and Desperado. Equipped with blade mode and able to absorb fuel cell electrolytes from enemies via any high frequency blade, it unfortunately lacks any kind of self repair units, meaning Raiden must manually extract repair material from his foes in order to recover from damage. Our enemies can also heal. And we can't. I mean, I get it, but that's also crazy. Main weapon. I think we're going to get more weapons. More bodies, more weapons, that sort of thing. Although we can push square to go into enhancements here. Its metallic structure strengthened by an alternating current, this blade resonates such that it weakens the particle bonds of whatever it cuts. Its effectiveness is further boosted in blade mode, which consumes energy but enables high speed attacks. Customized by Doctor to absorb fuel, site fuel cell electrolytes from its victims. I can't read. What is under enhancements? Ooh. Movements become more precise, enabling him to deal greater damage. Enhances his ability to absorb electrolytes from the fuel cells of his foes. And lowers fuel cell consumption in blade mode, reducing the amount of energy used. Okay. So we can upgrade that. Life. Endurance. Immediately reshapes his artificial musculature, I think that's how that's pronounced, whenever he's hit, reducing the amount of damage taken. Uh, 
I imagine that's going to extend the bar. Updated version of Raiden's cyborg body firmware, relevant, that optimizes power usage. Represented in the AR display as an extended fuel cell gauge. Okay. And skill. This is probably what's... Hello. Improves balance while airborne, enabling him to parry enemy attacks in midair. That's good. Faster, more detailed feedback to be delivered to brain synapses. Allows Raiden to freely sidestep enemy attacks in any direction. Excuse me? We have a dodge? I mean, I have to purchase that immediately, don't I? But how do we use it? And I've got a choice as to whether I've got an equipped or not, which is curious. A uh, special upward thrust with his weapon held in his foot. That is useful, but I do know how the launches work. Sweep kick. Updated version, blah, blah, blah. Nimbly lower his body and execute a special foot sweep maneuver. That's kind of similar to the, um, I guess, the running sweep that we've got. Enabling to channel air pressure into a shockwave. I imagine we're going to need to purchase all of these at some point. Alright. I have a new skill, but I've got no idea how to use it. Okay, I know the combos are here. Does it mention anything about this thing we just picked up? Defensive offense. Square and X together. Okay. I'll have to test that in combat if I can figure it out. Do we have any more codex? You must aid civilians, Raiden. It is not part of mission, but Maverick is still one of the good guys, yeah? That civvy needs your help. Hurry, Raiden! Come on, come on, save him! He's gonna get killed! I have no faith in my ability to save this civilian, just to be very clear. Stay vigilant, Raiden. You must... Doctor doesn't care about the civilian, but the others do. I'll see what I can do. But I don't think I'll succeed in this. I do recall trying this many, many, many months ago and just failing. Well, so I think I can open that. We have a grenade. So if we throw the grenade at those three, that will take out the two cyborgs, thus enabling us to save the civilian. I think. Right, thought is, let's take out the first guy there, stealthily like, then maybe hit the guy behind if possible. Ah! Return to your designated route, Ryzen. Check the coordinates on your Soliton radar. Can't load the checkpoint. What are you doing here? This area is off limits. Yeah, I'm leaving. Christ, he said he had a family. How did I do? So you could not stop them. Well, so be it. Perhaps you've got enough to worry about. Right. These rifles Desperado's using. Mac 200s, right? Same as Maverick standard issue. Nice weapon. Not that any gun is much use against a cyborg. Duh. The 200 is a thing of beauty. We were one of the first to adopt them three years ago. It has minimal muzzle flash and report when firing, and little recoil. Plus, the ejection port near the muzzle makes it good in both left and right hand. Rare for bullpup rifle. Easy maintenance, tough enough to take some dirt without jamming every shot, and it takes standard NATO magazine, so you can find ammo on almost any mission anywhere in the world. Can I have one? Sounds like somebody's in love. Well, it reminds me of the good old days. Most Soviet gear was trash, yes. But the rifles. Ah, the rifles. The best in the world. 
And it seems I'm not the only one to appreciate them. Apparently not. I see Max everywhere these days. They've spread all over the world, and so quickly. Still, I am sad to see Desperado using them against us. Well, not much we can do about it now. Such an elegant weapon. Waved around. Stado pri Turkaf. Stobi Stoli. Translate it, please. It's okay. Just calm down. I do wonder if that's just an evolution of the IK. <sighs> that sucks. I know it's not part of our mission, but I don't like seeing innocent civilians die for no reason. Yeah. Think there's any more of them here, Kev? Doubt it. It was all out war over at the palace. Once the evacuation order was issued, everyone should have fled to neighboring towns. Some of the cabinet were caught leaving Sukumi, though, and a lot of citizens got caught up in the crossfire. Some folks probably stayed put. Figured it's too dangerous to do anything else right now. Bad situation. Let's not let it get worse. Keep an eye out for more of them. No, I drugs, Kev. Try and help out. Just make sure you don't hurt them. Got it. Did they? Life signs are nil. Guess I was too late. <sighs> Copy that. Back to the mission, I guess. Check your destination. Doctor does not give a shit. All right. All right. Let's see if we can save this dude. I'm annoyed about that because I basically let go of the ninja run just as I was going over the left. That's basically why I fell and why it ended poorly. So your plan is to try and stealth kill this guy directly in front, then maybe stealth kill that guy at the back somehow. You can see there's sort of like another pickup directly above Ryder's head there. And then I'll try and sneak up on those two somehow, but we seem that if we get too close, they initiate dialogue and it ends very poorly for this villain. Is he gonna turn around? No. Yes, okay, he's turning around. Another grenade. Ah, don't do that, Rod. This is not an infiltration mission, but right now it feels like it. So, the dude on the left is pointing his gun. If I can sneak up behind him or dash up behind him, then I can blade mode him from behind or just execute him from behind and then take out the right one at my leisure. I don't know if that works or not though. We'll find out in just a sec, I guess. So I'm pretty sure the other dude is... The other dude's not an alert! Nope, there we go. Far. No electrolytes. Let him know he is safe. This is the part where I'll enter blade mode and threaten him, but so that's going to consume my fuel cells. Yes, Raiden. Harasho. That's one less death today. Now, on with the mission. And I only need to restart the checkpoint once. Raiden. If you ever get lost, use augment mode to check your next objective. By using augment mode, you can see enemy positions and the direction in which you should head. Useful for when you cannot find your objective on the Solitone radar. Ooh, nice work, buddy. <laughs> in the nick of time, huh? Think there's any more of them here, Kev? Doubt it. It was all out war over at the palace. We're seeing this. Once the some of the some folks bad sitch. Let's not let it if they're in a got it. Just the start of that dialogue is different. Riding, did you Yeah. Good thing I got here when I did. <sighs> I'm uh impressed, Ryden. Thanks. Now if you'll excuse me. Huh? Oh, right. The mission. Uh, Ryden, you called her, not the other way around. And once again, Doctor does not care either way. Thank you, thank you. I will not 
2,000 BP for saving that dude. Worth it. That's alright, he'll probably be dead by this time tomorrow. Okay, so there's a grenade here. I did see something else up here. Where was it? Further along? No, it was, uh, it was up here. How do I get up there? It's up to my left. Yeah, controls are a bit flossy, I'm finding. How do we get up there? Oh, never mind, I'm just a dumbass. No, I thought I saw a symbol on this thing. I thought it was actually a crate that we could open and retrieve something from. Or it might have just been getting... No, I'm getting confused with that. Can I go up here? Yes, there we go. It took a while, but we found it in the end. Let's see if we can go up here as well and maybe ambush that guy from up here. Not sure how to use grenades yet. Hopefully the game will teach me shortly. I saw something up there, but... Okay, it's further along. Never mind. The font is reminding me of Mass Effect. Don't know if anyone else is getting that impression or not. Oh, what were these things called? Are these geckos? Uh, is he charging? Oh, try to parry. Too late. This music. I was mashing that earlier and it wasn't letting me do it. So, Raiden, what's your game plan? You sound excited. Oh, I am. Front row seats to rematch. Raiden versus Giant Gecko. Yep. I've heard the stories. <laughs> I'm trying to work here, you know. Nah, don't be modest. It was you who taught anti-Irving tactics to my men. This I think you could handle with no legs and both eyes closed. <laughs> Flores. Okay, okay, I know. Never let your guard down in battle. So, let us recap what we know about your foe. An AT Corp representative gave me brochure last time he stopped by. The most recent model is the Block 30. Probably this is what they're facing here. Muscle contraction rate is increased by 6%, and the chassis is made from honeycomb boron fiber reinforced plastic. It's lighter, more durable. The engine still puts out 650 horses, but they say it is much more agile now. Can you tell the difference? It's dead now. It's been a while since I've had the pleasure. Equipable sensors have not changed much. Of course, we have the standard camera eye. Also, milliwave radar, low light camera, infrared camera, acoustic positioning gear, chemical sniffer. It looks like it's been mounted with 50 cal. Pretty light gear for one of those guys. Light isn't the word mm. that comes to mind, Boris. Well, extra agility or not, a lizard is a lizard. For you, this should be easy peasy. <laughs> we'll see about that. 50 cal is not light. <laughs> well, off you go. Time for the fun, yeah? Oh, this video will be perfect for sales presentations. Ugh, copy. I hope you've recorded that already because it's very dead now. <laughs> yeah, Towers of the Exploits. I definitely remember that cutscene from MGS4 as well. It was kind of crazy. Got yourself a gecko problem, huh? It's strong and speedy. Against a regular soldier, it'd be overkill. Yeah, I've seen him tear through more than a few troops. But I'm no regular soldier. Mm. No doubt. Against state of the art like you, I almost feel sorry for it. Probably not a lot I can tell you here that you don't already know. Yeah, I've got this one covered. Well, time for a little pest control, I guess. This music. Be careful out there, Ryden. I know you're used to these things, but nothing's more dangerous than letting your guard down. Don't have to tell me twice. 
Underestimating your enemy is the best way to get yourself killed. I, I can't give you much advice here, but just take it slow and do it right, okay? You want me to save just in case? No, thank you. No? Well, I guess you'd know better than me. Still, be careful. So we can't actually save in combat. I didn't think that would be a thing. Ah, an Irving, yes? Rather old school, as they say. Not your cup of tea, Doc? Oh, no. One could argue they dominated during the SOP days, but they certainly are not much use now. They have been improved upon over the years, no doubt. But there's only so much one can do with such outdated technology. You have a fair amount of experience with them already, yes? I doubt you need any battle advice from me. No, probably not. It's been a while, but I still remember how they move. Their ticks and tells. Ticks. They telegraph most of their moves in advance. So long as I can parry its attacks, I can strike back often. I do believe, however, that the armor on its legs has been improved. I imagine that a simple slash or two will be insufficient to topple it this time. We'll see. I imagine you already know this, but the defenses on an Irving unit cannot be broken in a single strike. The leg armor has also been reinforced. You must weaken it first before you can break through. All right, let's clean up these other two. So this little jump strike that I'm doing to the side here. And maybe not even that. Oops. This is me using square and X together. Using the ability that I've unlocked. And I'm not sure why I'm pushing shoulder for parry. That doesn't work. I'm getting confused with a different game that I'm playing, clearly. There we go. Oh, we got some more. Get off. We've actually got both there. Yes, yeah, so there's a QTE which involves hitting both the triangle and circle buttons at the same time. Curse you! Trying to enter blade mode, but the problem is the last hit is moving too far away. Very good, Ryder. Now keep heading for refinery. I want to look for stuff first. That music. I have to listen to that without me pausing the game every couple of seconds because that music sounded awesome. Hollow chip small BP. All right, we have many more enemies ahead of us. And that looks like an RPG. Uh, how do I open that thing? I actually have to be precise enough to hit the lock data storage. Another collectible, which we definitely won't be doing on stream. Uh, is there anything I can do about this gecko? Might be able to sneak up behind it, but it's going to be close. I know it works on you, so that's why I'm doing you first. Yes. One strike, one kill. Well, let me just retreat because I want to pick up the stuff that I've gone past.
I think if I go over this bridge for that guy, we're going to get spotted, so I do need to go all the way around. Another rocket launcher. And hopefully I can just take out this fool from above, or just by sneaking up behind him. Sneaking up behind him is probably safer. Yeah, that's totally the font from Mass Effect, I reckon. The indicator, or the distance indicator 52.9, that is from Mass Effect. And the game is constantly telling me left and right change the sub-weapon. Seen that? Ah, uh, see, I can go up and down here to change that. Larger and heavier than a conventional grenade, it requires cyborg grade strength to throw a reasonable distance. Heat MP launcher for use against large UGs and cyborgs. It utilizes a whole bunch of weird shit that I don't want to talk about. Oh, okay, so we can repair, we can keep this stuff and repair ourselves out of combat or in combat. But you know what I mean. We can come to this menu and we can heal ourselves if we can't heal ourselves while we're actually in combat. It can be used to immediately restore Raiden's life gauge by a small amount, or when selected, to automatically do the same when the gauge reaches zero. So it's a ration, basically. Nice moves, Raiden. I agree, Courtney. I completely agree. Now, um, Boris, could you please remove this barrier? No, we're going that way. Okay. transmission near your position uh, from the frequency most likely an enemy data terminal check it out we may be able to salvage some intel more collectible bullshit VR mission you can play this mission by selecting select pressing select whatever and I can't read the rest because I can't talk that fast I get it though. Hey, Blade Wolf. Show yourself. That cutscene direction, though. And you are. I am IF Prototype LQ 84I. IF Prototype. Interface Prototype. All autonomous UGs feature high level onboard artificial intelligence. An additional prototype interface enables verbal communication. I possess an intellect far beyond human reckoning. You don't say. Okay, then. What's the meaning of life? <laughs> I am here to kill you. That doesn't really answer my question, but, you know.
pretty simple thinking for such a mighty intellect. I may analyze orders, but I may not disobey them. Should I disobey a direct order, my memory would be wiped. I must destroy you. What good is an intellect if you can't use it? Your taunting is pointless. Exterminate! Honestly, that's not taunting. That's just friendly conversation. Oh damn, this music. Alright. Folks, I need some assistance. That thing's fast. Yes, faster than you, I suspect. In terms of pure speed, at least. But it cannot run circles around you forever. It needs to attack if it wishes to win. Yeah, and that's probably my best shot. Duh. Don't bother chasing. Let it come to you. If you can parry its blows, you'll have a chance to counterattack. Watch its movement. And wait for the right moment to parry. Textbook battle tactics. Got it. Remember, you can parry even while taking damage. Do not give up just because you are hit. Uh, if I get knocked to the ground, then no, I can't parry. But that's saying if I just get hit in general, then I can still parry through that. I didn't actually know that. The only other thing we're getting out of that is don't chase after it. I've seen a lot of weird stuff, but this takes the cake. Well, I'm glad you're entertained. Too bad you're missing all the fun. It's a real party down here. Sorry, buddy. My specialty's cultural studies, not combat scenarios. If you're looking for my help in a brawl, you must be getting pretty desperate. <laughs> Good point. Besides, if you've got time to screw around on the codec, can't be all that bad, right? We'll see. Okay, back to the party. Oh, Kevin, you have no idea. Everything okay, Raiden? Yeah, it's a fascinating foe, but I'm not going to cut it any slack. We're dealing with terrorists here. And AI or not, it's still aiding and abetting them. Yeah, be careful though. You might want to save your data first. No? Well, watch yourself out there. Most fascinating foe. And such natural speech. Mm, I figured you'd be I've interested. I've never heard of a UG capable of conversing of its own free will. Yeah, maybe we can just talk this through. Any weaknesses come to mind? Something I can exploit? No particular weak points come immediately to mind. It's fast as hell, and it's flinging knives at me from a distance. Indeed, I'm not sure your body can match its speed. And if you can't dodge the knives, then your best bet is to deflect them. Try entering blade mode. I'll give it a try. Do you want me to enter blade mode to knock down the knives similar to the missiles from MG Ray? Alright, let's give this a go. Taking orders from an AI dog. Pathetic. Oops. I think one of them is pretty much dead, but uh, the other two are. There we go. Once again, I don't know whether to go for the um, blade mode thing or the execution like that. Get down here, you. Your intellect is far below you. 
Use your intellect evade my blows. Did not see that one coming. I see, so he's sort of circling, and then he chooses a moment after that to attack, and that's when I need to parry. Do we have a gecko? Yes, we do. I suppose you have anything you need to say about the gecko? It's called for reinforcements? <laughs> Crafty little mutt. This could be trouble. Not really. They're packing self repair units, right? Unless they're stronger than I think, this could actually be a good thing. Well, hopefully, yes. But be careful. Yeah, it's just Boris who has new, unique dialogue here. Everyone else is the same. Oh, did not see that one. Did see the red flash. Okay, saw that one for sure. Ah, oh, missed the uh, auto parry. There we go. No, missed. Wrong direction. Damn, it's a full heal almost. I was down to 15% and that heal beats full. Oh, come on. Might have still been recovering from the previous attempt at parry. Gotcha. Oh, I reckon I'm gonna get right on the frame, but the problem is that's too late. I'm not familiar with this track that's playing in the background, I'm gonna have to listen to it afterwards. Camera. Give me Bayonetta flashbacks right now. Not continue. Let's ask ChatGPT. I wish I could see how old it is, but the problem is the PS3 version is sub weapon story? Yes, please. The PS3 version is just too low res to be able to make that out. I could tell that it was made in the US and that it had no affiliation. Hello. 